Next on stage, let me introduce you our next keynote speaker. Dr. Maria Todd, Chief Executive Officer, Mercury Healthcare International, Denver-based consultant, award-winning speaker, trainer, and author, Maria Todd brings you her best insights and strategies from working on various healthcare, health tourism, and international development projects in the USA and abroad for the past 35 years. She's the author of 18 best-selling professional books on healthcare management topics and practical guidance for health and wellness tourism business development. Without further ado, please welcome Dr. Maria Todd. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be back here in India. This is my third visit. I've seen Chennai, Bangalore, Delhi, and Gorgon. I've toured about 22 different hospitals throughout India. And I concur with some of the comments that have been made thus far. But I think you're short selling yourself as India. I believe your message could use a little fine tuning to come away from the cost. There's no doubt that you are less expensive than many places and that you have very well-trained doctors and nurses. But you're not selling that. And so what I want to give you today is an offer of a different perspective for your messaging, your destination development, and your branding of the Indian health tourism product. When I say health tourism, I'm covering the medical, the surgical, the diagnostic, the dental, and the Ayush services that you are known for, that you can, you can claim as the thing that you own. And so, I want to start first by saying that you need some sort of a master plan for health tourism. What I hear when I hear the message of India health tourism is nothing short of a cacophony. I've, I was raised in a musical family, and when I finished high school, I played 26 instruments. My father was a Juilliard graduate instructor, and I was forced to practice every day. I was in the band, in the symphony, in the jazz ensemble, one day we had a band director that got sick and we got a substitute and he was mean and he wasn't a musician. He was an English guy, English major. He was sent to babysit the band and he was so nasty, nobody liked him and I was the, shall we say, ringleader, troublemaker. Spirited child. Yeah, that's a good word. Spirited child. And so I told the clarinets, when he puts up his hands and he says the downbeat, clarinets, you play the Sousa march. Trombones, you play Brahms. The flutes, you play Beethoven. Now everybody on the count of one, two, three, boom, noise. That man looked at us and couldn't believe the noisy sound, the cacophony that was going on. And when I hear the message of the brand of India Health Tourism, 
I hear Apollo saying one thing, and Fortis saying another, and Medanta saying another, and Ast saying another, and this one saying another, and I don't hear what is India for healthcare. I don't hear the assimilation of a puzzle, like a jigsaw puzzle, that looks like the picture on the top of the box when the puzzle is finished. All I hear is, we're cheaper than you. You offer and should take pride in so much more, but you're not doing it. Why? Because no one has rounded up the message senders into a destination brand that owns some concept of medical tourism. All of the things that the professor said about the economic issues are pretty close to the truth. There's been some change in the US, so some of his numbers are a little outdated. For example, he said that the hip and the knee surgeries were in the vicinity of 22 to 28,000. But we started a program a few years ago with our national health system called Medicare where we now have bundled case rates and the average in 67% of the hospitals is $7,500 for a knee surgery. So if you keep competing on price and saying that you're 80% less than the United States, you're spinning yourself into a vortex of the lowest price. You are commoditizing yourself instead of raising yourself up to where price becomes irrelevant. Your access is faster than many places in, in the world. Access to good, solid health care. But a health tourism experience is more than just a medical appointment or a surgical appointment and a hotel booking. It's a destination experience. You call this place incredible India, but you fail to tell the story of why healthcare is what it is in India. What I heard the minister say was, you have a spirit of giving and a spirit of, of treatment and a business mind. People don't buy what you sell and people don't buy what you sell because of a cheap price. They buy what you sell because of why you sell it. That's your story. And I'm not hearing it on LinkedIn, I'm not seeing it on Facebook, I'm not seeing it on any of the touch points where you communicate with the market. I see that your message is we own cheap healthcare. You are, you are worthy, you have done all the homework, You've built the medical infrastructure. You have a tourism infrastructure that is unique. I can't find the tourism components that you offer here to meld with a, with a, a strategy, a product strategy. I don't see that in Dubai. I don't see it in England. I don't see it in the United States. You are India. This is a different experience. You have the hospitality, you have the hotels, you have the hospitals, and you have a loving people. People who welcome visitors. People who serve, people who respect. And you're not telling that story. You have to put this puzzle together. So, what have some of the others done out there? Turkey has developed a giant cluster of hospitals. They built no infrastructure. 
You call Turkey and ask for a quote, sometimes it takes six weeks to get a response back. Not in India. Turkey is now getting a reputation for charging people more because they have a foreign passport. India is too. Israel is too. Germany is too. Korea made it part of the law. Korea said, we're going to have a national fee schedule, just like the minister said, a transparent pricing. But Korea said, but if you're doing medical tourism and it's a foreigner, you can charge them 150% of that. How welcoming is that? Is that the brand reputation that you want as India? Because it's already starting. People already know this. The facilitators already know this. Dubai built a Dubai healthcare city. They put a bunch of healthcare places in a geographic location, but they made it a special economic zone. So locals have to pay money. It can't be accessed by the Dubai Health Insurance Program. And there's a nonverbal communication message being sent when Dubai sends its own citizens as part of its public health system outside of Dubai. Because what it's saying is, I don't use it. Instead of getting testimonials that say, I used it, it was great, you should too. And then they keep changing the CEO, thinking that this is going to give a different outcome. That's like a football game and a football team. That's not health care. Argentina. Argentina made a law to count medical tourism, but it doesn't count domestic medical tourism, and it doesn't count the numbers of the people that are coming from near market, because it's, oh, they're just our neighbors. There are so many different initiatives going on. China. We don't know if China is selling medical tourism or buying medical tourism. What we do know is that they have three medical tourism conferences in Shanghai in May in a week and a half period of time. Are we telling the market that medical tourism is about conferences? or about a destination experience where you get health care. There are 42 medical tourism conferences between January 2017 and May of 2017. 42. Who can afford to go to 42, time or money-wise? Nobody. We have conference fatigue at this point. Tunisia. Tunisia has a brand new government. They just hired Deloitte to build a tourism infrastructure for the new government and have now decided that they're also going to add medical tourism. They're capturing people from Libya, Algeria, the Maghreb, and the GCC area, and France. You have Qatar. Qatar has the medical, the Qatar Foundation with Her Highness at the helm. They've just built a brand new children's hospital. They built an education city and they're also building a multi-use development that will have medical, residential, hotel, etc. India already has that, but unless you read the right magazine, you have no idea that that's really going on because India is telling a message that undersells what its value proposition is. Then you look at Colombia. Colombia built three special economic zones. Their locals can't use it, so they can't get testimonials. If they can't get testimonials, they can't get word of mouth. And then Colombia, when you arrive, into Bogota or Medellin, the first thing you see getting out of the plane are gorillas in fatigues with AK-47s. Welcome. 
that makes me want to turn around and go right back home. <laughs> Malaysia built a beautiful medical health travel council. But when I went to the IJN hospital, the public health heart hospital there, and I said, will you do a, destiny or a, a discharge management conference with the patient, with the follow-up doctor in the other city? They said, no. I said, what do you mean, no? They said, oh, we can't possibly manage that and it would cost money. So you have all these little things going on. Europe, you have thermal springs and you have dental clinics and plastic surgery. You have competition for appointments, for procedures, where you have less competition and more ability to shine is by partnering and making part of the puzzle that destination experience of India that is not anywhere else in another 195 countries. That's what is your unique sailing proposition. So I want to give you a couple of things that have to be done in order to make this puzzle work. And I'm going to go kind of fast, and if you want these slides later, let me know, email me, and I'll send you a copy of it. You need a national strategy, but you can start with a state strategy. And some sort of a framework law. Now I'm together with the minister on the idea that the least amount of government is good, but you need some in order to ensure integrity of the brand of the destination, the brand of the service, and some sort of standardization. You need a product strategy. Many of your hospitals skip directly to a selling strategy to sell off excess capacity instead of a product strategy. You need some health policy on what can be said and how it can be said so that you don't besmirch the destination brand. In order to do this, you have to pull together a product strategy that includes the hospitals, the clinics, the clinical research trials, the spas, the resorts, the rehab centers, dialysis travel. You have to pull together a way to convey the quality, the safety, the outcomes, the customer service, and a set of minimum requirements. Your brand strategy has to talk to a consumer, a unique, ideal consumer, which the whole world is not your consumer. So if you waste messaging on someone who will never be your customer, you're diluting the power of the message that you could have if you targeted an ideal consumer better. Because then you would be talking one-to-one -one with someone, a ultra high net worth, a VVIP, a person of modest means, or a person who needs a solution that's last chance that can be found from the innovation within India. A national reputation. You have good health care, but you're not amplifying it. An image and an identity. What do I expect? If I've never been to India, what would I expect when I land from the plane? Most people outside of India that have never been here have no idea what to expect. They know only India from an Indian restaurant experience. That's it. And if you keep talking cheap, then the ultra high net worth individual says, oh, you're not talking to me because I'm not looking for cheap. I'm looking for excellence. Pitch yourself as a center of excellence in healthcare. Because then cheap becomes irrelevant. But in order to do all this stuff, you need to do capacity development. There might have to be some sort of taxation. And there's a way that you can do this by adding something like 25 USD per case I did the math. 
he said you did 150,000 cases. If you do 150,000 cases and you put a $25 tax of a, of a tax increment financing idea, you don't have to come up with new money. You can attach that to the healthcare or the medical tourism visa and that will fund $3,750,000 just that could be used for public health additions to make the public health sector stronger. It can be used for capacity development and training. It can be used for coming up with a public-private partnership that combines the tourism with the health care to create one unified message of a product and a destination experience and can attract foreign investment. The next thing is you have the health tourism definition. What is health tourism in India? Is it the Ayush? Is it medical? Is it surgical? Is it dental? What is the health tourism of India? Because I can find a licensed physician and a certified or accredited hospital pretty much anywhere I go in the world. What makes you different? In the United States, we have differentiation. We got it on January 20th. We look crazy now. <laughs> we look scary for medical tourism. If he signs another one of these wacko executive orders that bans another group of people, and you have people in a hospital who come out of a hospital, they go to a hotel, they're recuperating in the hotel, and all of a sudden he says, all right, Lazarus, get up, arise, take your pallet and get the hell out of our country. We can't sustain medical tourism like that. He doesn't realize that. But what does that do? It gives India yet another opportunity to show its welcoming arms. I forgot my medication when I came here the other day, and I fly so much that I was on my third episode of deep venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. So for me to miss a dose of my Eliquis medicine was very serious. I called a contact at Apollo, and he was able to get me the 10 tablets that I need. That prescription cost me $450 per month in the United States. Here, that prescription for 30 tablets or 60 tablets would cost about $50. I've never heard India market pharmacy tourism. And yet, I could take $450 times 12 and cover the cost of an airline ticket, five-star hotel, dinners in the best restaurants, and a year's worth of my medication, and come to India like a tourist. You're not messaging that. That's a stone you've left unturned. It's the same medication. There's no nonsense of counterfeit medicines. It's the same same brand medication, it's just less expensive. But you don't pitch the less expensive, what you pitch is, come, I give you value and experience, destination experience that you can't get someplace else. The price story is this little tiny, tiny piece. So another thing, you have to have some health policy issues developed some sort of a framework law so that not everybody at the airport that decides I'm going to be in medical tourism today and I'm going to start touting appointments at some hospital competes with people who actually know what they're doing. That's not happening in India. In India, you have people from Afghanistan who because of the immigration law cannot work, cannot go to school, so they go into these jobs 
as drivers and appointment finders, is that the impression you want to give on arrival in India? It looks discombobulated and chaotic. And yet you offer so much more than that. But if you don't control that, and that's the first impression, everything else, it goes downhill. You need capacity development but not at the university level that a lot of people can't afford. You need capacity level at the service lines, and that is at the VOTEC, vocational technical education level, where more people can learn and more jobs can be had, more respectable, well-paying jobs. You need message guidance, message parameters that say, this is how we portray India. Not every man for himself, every hospital for himself, every hotel for himself, because then the market gets confused, and if the market is confused, they don't buy. They go someplace else where there's clarity. Why? It's not their front brain talking to them. It's their reptilian hind brain going, I don't know what's there, it's scary. You have to show them that you're gonna put your arms around them and welcome them and the only way you can do that is to describe the experience, not the cost. Describe the talent, describe the service. You have it, why aren't you amplifying it? It's missing. But it's not for the hospital or the doctor clinic to set the message for the destination. That's tourism. That's the tourism authority's job, budget, responsibility. You have to have collaboration. No hospital can afford to do destination branding plus hospital branding. So you have to have the collaboration between the two in order to construct the jigsaw puzzle message. That advertising and branding and referral partner development, your, your hotels, your service departments, all these things have to come together in one big giant piece. Proper accommodations with the right wall coverings, floor coverings, with the right stairs and elevators and infrastructure and construction to take care of people who are recovering, who are vulnerable, who may not have the mobility who may need special diets. All those things have to come together. The capacity development must be created in order to create a product, a unique Indian product. But India is such a huge country that I don't want to suggest that you can impact that change straight away. Where you can impact that change straight away is right here in your state, right here in your city, and then reach out, scale. Don't try to bite all of it, the, the, the steak at one time. You can't do that. You'll choke. So Every last piece, airport readiness, taxis, car rentals, private livery services, driver training and safety. When we came in the, uh, yesterday morning at five o'clock, I told Sarah, who was in the car with me, I said, Sarah, tell me when we get there because I can't take looking at the traffic anymore the way this driver's driving. He frightened us. He was dodging in between and out of the lorries and parked cars all over the place. And all I could think to myself was, are we going to make it there alive or are we going to become a patient? A first timer to India, I am not. But at the same time, it was still scary to me. All of that means that you have to then show them, okay, we're prepared, our best drivers, they're fully insured, our best vehicles, leg room that you need, everything that you need, it's all here. We've prepared it, we've checklisted it, we've dotted our I's, we've crossed our T's, we've made a product to welcome you. Then you have multi-agency involvement 
And the multi-agency uh, involvement that I see is that you will have Ministry of Health, Ministry of Tourism, Economic Development, Taxation, Finance, Urban and Regional Planning for your sidewalks and your healthful city activation, smart cities. You have all these pieces, but they're hard to find. So immigration and visa, the hardest thing for me to go through in the United States was to get my Indian visa. I had to fly to San Francisco. I had to wait in a queue. I had to leave my passport. I had to bring all this paperwork. And I had to then wait for them to process it. The whole endeavor cost me over $450 just to get an Indian visa. It makes it kind of hard to do business with you. That might need to be changed a little bit. You have hotel association, medical association. They need to all partner up and be included in this collaborative jigsaw puzzle design. You need a national market strategy that can then be activated at each major city for its own, to give it its special Bengaluru flavor, Delhi flavor, Gurgaon flavor, so that you can still compete within the country while at the same time presenting a united product and reputation strategy to the world. The other thing that you haven't done, or haven't done well enough, is define your target markets. Who is the ideal customer for Bangalore? Who is the ideal customer for Delhi? Where are those people? Why did you target them? Begin with the why. Why did you target that group of people? What is unique about India? And how can you message it in a way that's relevant to that particular listener? What are your barriers to competition? What are your barriers to entry of another competitor? You need to look at the competitor analysis of everybody else who's saying, we're cheap too, because that's also going on out there. They're all saying we're cheaper than, than the United States. So what? Why don't you say you're better? Why don't you have the social proof to say, we do this, we own this corner of medical tourism, this kind of service, whether it's hearts, knees, backs, infertility, whatever the case, what do you own? What service do you own? You don't need to own all the services. You need to be really good and focused so that you can do a Lean Six Sigma, more volume, the power of the volume, the power of that infrastructure that he was talking about. And you need to look at your source markets. Can they turn around and build their own instead of having you supply it for them? Everything is a make or buy decision. So you're gonna have to look at East Africa and West Africa and say, what if they were to build their own tomorrow? Would that piece of our market dry up? Absolutely. Or would somebody else go and get it? So that health tourism experience, it has to be a branded health tourism experience where the individual stakeholders deliver a bundle of services from wheels down to wheels up. It's not about appointments and commissions. So, Think about building a master plan for Bengaluru. Start at home. Start with a living brand to become an integral part of your health tourism customer's life. This adds customer lifetime value and reduces the cost of customer acquisition. If they come back multiple times, you don't have to keep earning new customers. 
It has to be based on a passion for the understanding of what people need, what they want to buy, not what you want to sell. Because what you want to sell is what every other medical tourism competitor wants to sell. Bariatrics, hips, knees, hearts, cosmetics. Then you become a commodity. Use the latest strategies of consumer collaboration to create a more culturally evolved, emotionally engaged, holistic connection to the consumers that would be your ideal customers. Forget the rest. They're not your customers. They're not going to be. It's too much work to make them so. Grab that low-hanging fruit and run with it. Your suppliers take everybody, the whole village, pharmacies, hotels, resorts, spas, restaurants, transportation, destination management companies, tour operators. Everybody's in this. It's not just about the doctor's appointment or the surgery appointment and the hotel booking and an airline ticket. The vision of the master plan is that each supplier is collaborating with local value chain suppliers in a way that is designed to bring its unique brand approach to build personal relationships. And you can do that with innovation, wearables, and other biometrics things, and have them come back, have a portal for them to enter their data, so that when they come back, they don't have to remember anything. It's already in the, in the computer. So that you market a health tourism product. The mission is to shape and give leadership to the suppliers so that they can fulfill the Indian health tourism customers' needs and desires, realities and fantasies, and with unique, personalized Indian health tourism solutions by becoming an integral part of their life. They don't just leave India and that's the end of it. You need to keep that relationship built. And the way you do that is with more touches after the sale. It's with outcomes measurements. It's with email, newsletters. It's with engagement tools. It's with a wearable that's branded that says a billion beating hearts or whatever and has something in it that can download their data, their pulse, their walking, their food intake, their sleep. So that when you do a, a checkup or something else, they already have a relationship and a reason to come back. It's complicated, but it's not impossible. But the more we have, we now have about 160 countries out of 196 recognized jurisdictions announcing medical tourism. So it's more complex to win than ever before. And there are many examples of failed medical tourism strategies and initiatives among those 160. You have to focus on what you have. You have a beautiful country, an interesting historic country, a multicultural country, multilinguistic country. You have excellent trained doctors, excellent facilities, excellent nurses, an excellent hotel staff, restaurants, even the porters at the airport, They're, they smile, They're, they welcome you, they want to help. And so you must maximize on that and maximize on the human values that are India. The money will come. The money's there to be made, but it's a byproduct of what you are selling. Position your product in a way that no one can compare with or substitute you easily. That's the Michael Porter concept, right? The substitution? You don't want to be that much of a commodity that they can substitute you with anybody else with a license and a, an accredited facility. So India's brand value for medical tourism will improve as it becomes more intimately connected with the authentic values of the prevailing culture and the real lives and needs of human beings who will be its customers. Thank you. <laughs>